Well, it's a privilege to be here with all of you today. Let me just start off by saying I worked for a city, for city government for 20 years, and I also worked on the pastoral staff of a church in Costa Mesa for nine years. So I feel like in some ways I'm home and also able to speak to this subject with some knowledge. Um, to, to just reflect on the experience that David and others have, have shared about what happens when a project is before the community? Let me stand up so those of you over here can, yeah. can see me. The worst time to engage advocacy is when the community is being presented with a project. <laughs> right? And that's when all of us go, oh, something's going on, right? Something's happening. And I either need to oppose it or support it. And occasionally I'll have no opinion, but that's rare for me. I'll always have an opinion, as do everybody who lives around the neighborhood of a project. They're going to have an opinion. And one of the things I've been taught in my career, which I've always found to be true, is that you really are entitled to your own opinion, just not to your own facts. <laughs> Although what facts are nowadays in our political world seems, you know, questionable. But I, I still believe, and, and you know, a great deal of credit goes to uh, David and UCI, the UCI team for the great data set that they provided, which people have argued about, is that data right? But, but it's the only data in town. It's hard to argue with it. So what I would say is from, a, from the faith community perspective that, you know, as Michael was saying, man, it's heavy lifting to engage in political activism to combat a message that's been ginned up that is not going to be responded to by education, right? Tustin, Fullerton, I mean, I've been in so many, I've seen low-income community members oppose a low-income housing project because they're afraid of the impact of these people coming into their neighborhoods. So what you can know is, this isn't a fact-based discussion. This is, you're changing the character of my community, aren't you? I think you are. And the only reason you're about to have this argument, conversation with me, is because you've already got a plan. And you're going to execute that plan, and you just need me to get out of the way. Now that's assuming, now I call that a good intent conversation. Because those, those people who are truly coming from that place are open to persuasion over time. That's my experience, having spent 15 years in this field, as well as 20 years working for city government, watching these conversations go on until two and three in the morning in council, in the chambers. So what I can say is, honestly, we are so fortunate to have Bex and United in Homelessness Campaign run, being run for the United Way and Brad and the team. There is a groundswell of organization that's now occurring. Because one of the things that needs to happen that has not really happened in Orange County to support these projects is the kind of advocacy that Michael was talking about in terms of finding voices who can speak to political elected officials with facts, like Dr. David Snow's study. Over time, I guarantee you, speaking out of, scary to admit this, but 35 years of experience, over time, that kind of conversation moves mountains. If we wait until a project is coming in Tustin, and if we wait until a project is coming in Fullerton to try to catch up and educate people, you're, you're basically down to, can you get more bodies in the room? And that's what I would call political activism. You just gotta activate. You gotta go and you gotta do what's necessary because I can guarantee you having set in closed session with council members, they are literally doing what you talked about. They are counting the number of bodies they think are in the room on which side of the ledger. And if you think your voice doesn't count, let me speak from experience, it absolutely counts. If you've ever been at a council meeting or a public hearing where a person who's a spokesperson for their point of view turns around to the audience and says, how many people here agree with me? And the hands go up and the politicians are counting. So that works. 
but what also works is a consistent groundswell of support that the council knows is gonna be there on every issue, patiently, faithfully, and I, I think, you know, it's difficult for me to like come from this angle anymore, but that pastoral, relational conversation that's rational and grounded and consistent and shows up every single time. Win, lose, or draw, they're coming back. And they're gonna support their position. And they're not coming from, I hate this particular thing. They're coming from principle. And they're gonna vote for elected officials and policymakers that support the principles that they're committed to. So I can certainly say, and I know I work with Helen every day, I'll, I'll just say, uh, Helen knows this story. There's a, there was a new mayor in Irvine. And uh, we wanted to show the mayor of Irvine that Jamboree had done great work in his community. So we gave him an address to drive by to see this housing project where homeless and people with mental health disabilities, formerly homeless, live in Irvine. He couldn't find it. A, he'd never heard of it. B, when he drove by it, not in a million years would he have recognized that as a place where folks who were previously homeless would be living. It looked like every other project that the Irvine Company had ever built. So he walks in and he goes, how long has this been here? And that's the kind of, organ, you know, there wasn't a project on the table, there was a shelter on the, on the table for Irvine, thanks to Judge Carter. They were deep struggling with the whole shelter question. So I would say, in short, long, patient commitment to constantly engaging the elected officials in your community, and I know Bex and I and uh, United Way are really working on concept to institutionalize a consistent um, pattern of educating city council members and elected officials and appointed officials throughout the county when there's no project in front of them. Because at that point, in some ways, it's too late to build a relationship. You have to build a relationship first. And I'd say, from my chair, that's what works over time. In, uh, gosh, all the years I've been working in this field now, eventually I've never seen a project not built. I've seen projects have to change, like we're considering changing the Tustin Permanent Supportive Housing Project, but something will be built there. Question is what and is it meet the highest need? So that's it, thanks.